It's complicated. We'll explain it later. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And we had a pretty heavy... Well, it ended up being a heavy episode at the end, so we wanted to do something light. Yep. So this will be a nice, quick, fun episode, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> about our past selves. Yeah. So we wanted to, we were talking about sending messages to our past selves, or if we could time travel, or things like that. Yeah. And what would you tell yourself in the past? It's a common thing. It's like, list of advice. Yeah. About how not to have a sucky adulthood. Yeah. But part of it is, like, both of us are kind of happy, and, and too much change would change who we are. Yeah. Which would be weird. Yeah. In fact, if if it changed us sufficiently, we would never have met. Or... Which we wouldn't do the podcast, which means we couldn't go back in time and give that advice. Exactly. I was just going to say, it would probably create a time paradox. <laughs> it would definitely, because if I advised myself to stay in school, yeah. I never would have met you. That's true. You could be prime minister right now. Oh, God. <laughs> Someone new is prime minister right now. Yeah, this is true. We're at the time of recording. We have no idea who it is. It's a mystery. Ooh, <laughs> spooky. Anyway, Ryan, let's time for the icebreaker. What is your best epoch? Your best two points in time, uh, fixed points in time. Yeah. Between, I would say the summer of 2006 at Peacekeeper Park. Um. It was one year before I went to Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, that, for me, is the summer of music. Maybe it's not the best music of all time came out in that summer, but for me, it's like the definitive list of music that came out. Tool released an album. Chili Peppers released an album. Um, Three Days Grace released an album. I first was introduced to Trivium. Uh, Atreyu, which got me into Kill Switch. I was introduced to As They Lay Dying, which but not really a band anymore because the lead singer's in jail for trying to kill his wife. But the music was really good. <laughs> um, oh dear. Yeah, but and, and I think some of this was uh, it's just an artifact of um, I lived out, so I worked at a place called Peace. Well, sorry, I I worked at a place called. Um, Lake Whitaker Conservation Area, and I lived at a place called Peacekeeper Park. Basically, I lived in a farmhouse for two or three months, um, and there was no internet, no cable, no television, no satellite. I had a phone, and I had a radio and books, so I just listened to the radio a lot. Nice. Um, and for me, when I think of, and I listened to FM 96 out of London, so I mean, that for me was the quintessential golden age of radio, uh, it was that summer. So, I mean, just it seemed like a lot of really good music was out. Um, listening to Alan Cross's show. This was back when um, Jeff... I remember his last name. There's uh, Jeff who did the afternoon show before he went over to the AM station. I can tell that he left a deep impression on you. Well, I, he went over to the AM station and started up a conservative talk show. It was the weirdest thing. He's, I wouldn't have expected that. Hmm. Um so yeah, and it, it, it was also a great summer um, working with my buddy Sam out of the conservation area. You know, cutting grass and doing manual labor during the day, security at night, um, some light debauchery, some fun shenanigans. Oh um, I kind of crashed the company truck into a tree a little bit, and uh, yeah, it was just a really fun summer. You know, it's. Uh, a little bit of little bit of love and romance, some some stupid stuff. Uh, just old enough to drink. Um, so yeah, it was just when I think about it, it was just a great year, you know. So uh, hmm. that was that's probably my best my best uh, point in time, I would say. Uh, mine is September 2011 to August 2012, which is grad school. Mm -hmm. uh, I spent a year doing my master's. And I got to meet and work with some really cool people. I got to take a look at professional academia in a way that I had never understood before. A uh, long enough look that I understood that I didn't want to go any farther in it. And I needed to do other stuff. I was seeing a really great girl at the time. I was... Um, I ran my first charity event. That was the, the first year we did Headshots. I, I just I, I tried a lot of new things. I failed at a lot of new things, and some of them really succeeded. I started really being online and spending more time on the internet, which is now where I spend all my time, uh, and I really like it here. So there's that. 
Uh, and by the end of it, by the time June rolled around, I had three months to write three major research papers. And I'd done a lot of the research, and I had, you know, like I had conceived of all these papers. All the, all the sort of hard stuff was the way. All I had to do was write them. Mm. And I, ha- I gave myself one month per paper. But by the end of it, I was not only writing, you know, easily a paper a month. Like, I turned in my last paper early. I was also writing seven blog posts a week, minimum. And like, it was just... I felt really sort of at leisure to be creative. That said, I could have done a lot more with my time. But, like, there was this notion where I was writing so much and I was really happy. And I, re- I didn't want it to end, but at the same time... I knew that it had to end because I couldn't afford to do another term. Mm-hmm. And my funding ran out at the end of August, which means hell or high water, I was finishing that degree. Mm-hmm. So the way that we decided to frame this was um, give yourself, you know, like a statement that you would give to yourself at three points in time. Mm-hmm. 10-year-old uh, you, 20-year-old you, and you from last month. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Ryan, if you met 10-year-old you... Mm-hmm. Through some confluence of timey wimey events, what would you tell them? So, uh, assuming little Ryan would listen to me. Well, <laughs> even if he didn't, well, I mean, you're still going to tell him. Me. Adults give advice to kids all the time that they're never going to listen to. Yeah, obviously, you didn't listen to you. Yeah, so I would probably tell him to take um, being active. More seriously, and active in a physical sense. So, mm. I mean, ten years old is not really a good time to be talking about up in your self improvement game. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, I'm not t- saying that I should have like exercised at ten or watched what I ate, uh, but I was still swimming at the time competitively. And before, so I, I started swimming in Canada and then moved stateside. And had I not moved to the states, if I had stayed in Canada on the team, within a year or two, I might have progressed from the B level team to the A team. Uh, so B level, we swam I think three days a week, and then we went to meets all the time. But the A team, they they swam every morning, like five mornings a week, plus the occasional afternoon swim. Like they were a more of like an elite traveling team. Yeah. Um, and I was told that I probably within you know maybe a year or two of progressing would have made it up to that point. Um, and like I, I wrestled a bit when I was uh, well, I might have been eleven years old at the time, but I, I, shortly after. I'm talking to Little Riot. I probably would have uh, I started wrestling and stuff. So I think if I could have urged him to maybe take health and fitness seriously, so like after puberty, maybe start lifting weights, um, just instill some of those good habits early on, and you know play more sports or try to be more active um, because things will come back to bite you in the butt, and you'll lose you'll lose out on some opportunities. For example. Um, summer of 2000, summer of some two, I think it was 2002, uh, I was given the opportunity through cadets to go to, um, Scotland on an exchange program. So they sent me up to CFB Connaught. I started the, the pre-course training. Uh, I did a fitness test, failed the fitness test. Uh, they gave me another option a couple days later tried to do the fitness test did even worse on the second fitness test probably i psyched myself out or something uh and so they sent me they returned me to unit they rtu'd me and uh and i ended up going from uh Kanaw in ottawa to cfb borden to do staff trip like i was a staff cadet for the rest of the summer um i found out in retrospect i was probably never i should have never gone for the pre-course training that i was i never had passed the fitness requirements but they somehow i had been placed into the program um, and so I lost out on an opportunity to, to travel internationally at the time, um, all because, you know, I was, I didn't really take it seriously. So there are other things that I probably missed out on, but that's just one example. So 10 year old Ryan, you should take just health and, and athleticism and, you know, nutrition and stuff. It all kind of gets all packaged together. Just take it a little bit more seriously, play some more sports, um, on top of everything else. Play more sports. <laughs> yeah, I officially I declare you a fake nerd with my absolutely not official nerd power, which I don't have. 
So if I if I'm a ten year old Jim, I would probably not punch him in the face. Um, ten year old Jim was in the fifth grade, and ten year old Jim had a superpower. Ten year old Jim could say the one thing that would escalate a situation dramatically. Like no matter how tense it was, ten year old Jim had a superpower that he could detect and without thinking utter the phrase that would make a tense situation detonate. And uh, I, I grew up when I was 10 uh, learning to use my superpower a lot um, on, my, on my parents, on my teachers, which is uh, where the rest of this comes in. My fifth grade teacher, would, uh, he, would, he would send me to the hall. He would just be like, go and stand in the hall or sit in the hall. I spent most of my fifth grade that I remember in the hall. And his sort of notion was, I could come back in when I was ready to apologize or when I was bored. But 10-year-old Jim was also super stubborn, and that is not a thing that... Like, like adult Jim is stubborn, but 10-year-old... Like, child Jim was infinitely more stubborn because he had even less shit to do. As an adult, <clears throat> there's a limit to my stubbornness because I have stuff I have to do. Mm-hmm. I can't just sit locked in a you know staring contest with you. I have to do my laundry, mm-hmm. and I'm, it matters to me. Also, it's just stupid bullshit, so I don't care. Um, but ten year old Jim did not have a lot to do, and so ten year old Jim was perfectly happy to just engage in a contest of wills with anyone. And so he'd be like, "Come back in when you're bored." And I learned never to be bored. I would look at weird patterns and tell stories about them and I spent the entire fifth grade telling stories to myself and the thing I would tell 10 year old Jim is the most important thing you have learned this year is how not to be bored the next important thing you have to learn is how to use that also stop being a shithead this is not a superpower (laughs) Then I would punch him in the mouth. <laughs> Very violent towards your past self. Listen, all right. I understand the kinds of things the ten-year-old Jim did. Yeah. All right. What about twenty-year-old Ryan? So twenty-year-old Ryan. Um, as I said, summer two thousand six was was amazing. Um, so this would have been then summer uh, <clears throat> two thousand seven, like. Basically, my birthday's in December, so December 26th, or December 2006 onwards. So, at any point during that time up until the summer of 2007 would probably be the best time to catch uh, 20-year-old Ryan. So, Ryan is in second year, uh, or heading into the middle of between second and third year. So, I wouldn't want to urge Ryan to do too too much, because uh, in 2007, I, I traveled to Kenya, and that was like one of those defining moments that when I look at where I am now, a lot of stuff is traced to that decision to go to Kenya. Um, so I don't want to mess around with that too much. Um, the only things I can think of that I would say is, uh, look, awesome things are coming. Like you're going to have an amazing time, just amazing things. So two things, learn to journal more or learn to write more because, uh, I did other expedition based stuff and I journaled a lot better for those, but Kenya, uh, I don't regret not journaling, uh, but it would have been a little bit more useful if I had journaled more uh, for finishing my Duke of Ed, which I did eventually, uh, my gold level of Duke of Edinburgh award. Um, and it was just, it would have been nice to put a few more stories to the pictures. Uh, and then the other thing I would say is, uh, and I won't put say what the hangups are, but you know, 20 year old Ryan, you have a few hangups, um, learn to let it go. Uh, in the end, it's seven years is too long to be hung up on this thing. So learn to let go and learn to journal a bit more. Hmm. Good advice. Good advice. You're, yeah. you're, you're on the solid like self-improvement advice train. Yeah. Uh, 20-year-old Jim was... Or was I working? I was working in a library at that point. I think I had just stopped working at Zeller's as a shipper receiver, and I had started working at a library and then I would go on to work construction and growth chamber repair all summer I believe uh, which was really weird I, I, and really fun I got to travel around uh, Ontario with a really neat guy and we would fix growth chambers at universities and I learned a whole ton of stuff about tech and 
hardware and both like tools and computers and like problem solving and just all kinds of stuff but uh, 20 year old Jim was not in a super great place because he, he didn't really have a career in growth chamber repair and he didn't really want a career in growth chamber repair he wanted to go to university at some point and like learn a thing I that was the summer I got my high school equivalency I think when I was 20 I saved up all my money a whole because that was a whole ton of money for me just to like get to London and back I remember because I couldn't afford a hotel room I had to sleep in a Tim Hortons um, they didn't mind too much but I heard Moby Dick that weekend but 20 year old Jim didn't have a plan he just sort of assumed that by the time he was 30 he would have either figured everything out or he wouldn't be here anymore and the thing I would tell 20 year old Jim face to face with him is I am 32 and things are better I still have not figured everything out but I'm still here and things have improved and things are doing okay there are people who matter to you and you matter to them some of those people are people you fucking know like you know them now and you will continue to know them long into the future and to the point where you can't stop being friends with them because you're fucking stuck with each other for the rest of the, for the rest of your lives uh, which is great and also stop being a shithead and then I would punch him in the mouth listen you don't know what 20 year old Jim got up to the people that I know now who were friends with 20 year old Jim are amazing <laughs> <laughs> I mean none of them knew 10 year old Jim but 20 year old Jim um, 20 year old Jim was an okay guy when he was an okay guy well, but when, when he was an okay guy yeah well <laughs> 20 year old Jim was tautologically true when he was tautologically true fair enough but but yeah I mean it was, it's that notion that, that you have a future you don't know it yet because you don't think you have anything all you have is this stupid box of macaroni and cheese mm -hmm. which I still have it's up above us on this shelf and you are terrified of the fact that your life is going nowhere, that you were going to work, spend your entire life working in dead-end jobs and achieve nothing and matter to no one. And that still might be true. Let's, let's, let's not rule that out. No. But like, you, you do have a future. There is something... There is a person that you are trying to be that you are eventually going to get closer to. And only, only I could tell 20-year-old Jim that. Lots of people tried to tell 20-year-old Jim that. 20-year-old Jim wasn't fucking listening to anything. Mm -hmm. But I am the only person that 20-year-old Jim could listen to. Because I am the only person that really knows what we are like. Yeah, 20-year-old Jim was not in a good place. He had a really cool job for a while, but he was not in a good place. Anyway, Ryan. After all the feels... Yeah, <laughs> last month, you from last month. It is it is currently October. You from September. What would you tell yourself? September twenty second. And if you saw me, I was looking on my phone. It was only because I needed to verify the date. <laughs> September twenty second and September twenty third passed me. You will have Gus, our dog. <laughs> And he will be Not staying... our dog. I don't no, have a dog. my and past me's dog. Yes. You will have Gus for the weekend because you're helping Sarah out. And you will be also working full time. So Gus will be left alone at home. So Monday's fine. But se September 22nd, September 23rd, Gus has a problem with holding it until you're done work. So what I recommend <laughs> is that on September 22nd... <laughs> You maybe take a lunch break and you drive home and take Gus for a walk and check on him. Uh, September 23rd wasn't bad because September 23rd was in the kitchen, which is easier to mop up. But September September 22nd, we had to rent a carpet cleaner. And we were supposed to have a sushi date with Dave, who we hadn't seen and had had dinner with in a while. We were going to catch up. Dave was Dave is one of my uh, uh, he's a, my very first friend in university. We he we lived on the same floor. We were supposed to go for sushi at like six o'clock, 
<laughs> and I ended up having to push at 8 o'clock because I had to go and rent a carpet cleaner and uh, clean my carpet. This would be the weirdest, like, Doc Brown, like, like... Ryan from September 21st is coming around a corner, and Ryan from a month in the future grabs him and is like, Ryan! 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 You gotta get home! You gotta take care of Gus! <laughs> yes, so... <laughs> past me from last month. This is your future talking. Please, please, please decide for once to not bring a lunch to work because you've been diligently doing so for like two and a half years or two, to three years. Actually, maybe even more because you did it at the gambling lab. So good on you for, like, taking your lunch every day to work and being healthy and being frugal. But on that day, just go ahead and, and go home and uh, and take care of Gus. Take him for a oh, walk. Uh, that, that's Ryan, Ryan from the past. Ryan from one month in the past. You have a problem. Yeah. The problem is that you are too responsible. Yeah. You need to be more responsible by being less responsible. Yeah. To be fair, though... If you are still far too late, there's no stain. The smell is gone unless you're like a centimeter away from the carpet. Stop so smelling your carpet. It's okay. Don't ever smell your it's carpet. Okay. In fact, don't ever smell my carpet either. <laughs> Please don't. So, but um, that's that's my advice to me from last month. Next. Jim, what's your advice to you? To uh, Jim from last month is what did I do last month? Poetry slam. I did not go to the poetry slam last month because I was sleepy. And Kaylee was sleepy. Like, it was just a really low-energy day. And I recovered afterward, but I was I was really sort of just tired and out of it. But I think I would have recovered at the Poetry Slam. And I didn't play my guitar all month. Because I just sort of didn't have a... Like, I didn't give myself a chance to. I was too busy sort of trying to do other things. But uh, it would be that you don't need to go to the Poetry Slam to pick up your guitar. You can write music and play music, and you like doing that. Um, and it doesn't just have to be like prep for the poetry slam or write a song for the poetry slam. You can just do it. Mm. So do that because you like it. It turns out don't just work all the time. But what I would like to hear is what advice you would give yourself, you viewer or listener. You can leave it in the comments. Uh, to either 10-year-old you, or 20-year-old you, or you from last month, who I'm sure is at least... You're, you're a month wiser now, so that's something. It really took us a lot of work. I mean, time-traveling dog interruption. <laughs> I, I guess if you're time-traveling, you could just, like, time-travel to the past, walk your dog, and then it, like, present you would never know. Of course, if your dog never pooped on the carpet... Mm-hmm. Then it'd be another time paradox. Paradox, time paradox. Like, like yeah. you'd create us. Is that dinner with Dave worth creating a splinter timeline over? Yeah, I don't have an answer for that. It's okay. We don't live in that splinter timeline <laughs> that we know of. Yeah, unless uh, you know, past you really wanted to have dinner with Dave. For future you, I guess. That's a scary thought to leave on. (laughs) How many splinter timelines do we live in? We might be in the dark timeline. Uh, You do have a beard. I do have a beard. So do I. For listeners, we have beards. My Spock beard. I cover up my cheeks. If you cover up the rest of your beard apart from the the part that looks like a Spock beard, then you have a Spock beard. (laughs) That's true. Uh, We're never going to be able to unthink that now. Yeah. I don't have a Spock beard. But I am Jim. And I'm Ryan. And we're signing off. Stay wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Excuse me while I enjoy a delicious sip of beverage. Trademark. It's Coke Zero. Oh.